All right, well, obviously I'm doing something a little bit different today because I am here and not over there where the chalkboard is, but just give me a second. I'll end up at the chalkboard at various points during this video. Uh, the reason I wanted to do a video like this was, well, one, I can start out the video this way and I can show you what I look like, and two, which is probably more related to why you're here, I think that there's this preconceived notion that you're either a math person or you're not a math person, and I think that's the wrong way to think about math. Just like everything else in life, mathematics is a skill and it takes time and energy to develop that skill. And there are different things that you can do that aren't necessarily math that will make you better at doing math. So I wanted to go through four things that I think are really important and really helpful in becoming a better mathematics student or a better mathematician. Um, that being said, since I do think math is a skill, the most obvious place to start is with one, practice, practice, practice. This is huge. In computation-based mathematics, there'll be a lot of different procedures and formulas that you can use in specific situations. And in proof-based mathematics, there are lots of different theorems and definitions that you'll pick up along the way. And in both cases, it can be pretty difficult to pick out the information that you need in a given situation in order to solve a problem. If you were to boil down mathematics to one task, it would probably fall in the realm of pattern recognition. And the important thing about pattern recognition is you have to see the patterns over and over again to start figuring out when they will occur. And this goes for doing certain computations or arguing with certain types of proof arguments. Practicing those problems and practicing those proof arguments are just going to make you more familiar with the different algorithms and patterns that you need to know in order to solve different mathematical problems. This is really important with brand new problems as well, because if you can relate it back to something that you already know or already recognize, then you have at least a framework or a blueprint for where to start. You may not get the answer with that blueprint or framework, but at least you have somewhere to start investigating the problem and try to figure out what's going on and what you're actually dealing with. Two, making your own examples. The other thing that you can do that is arguably a little bit more difficult than just solving problems that are handed to you is making up your own problems. The main problem here as a student is that there's a lot of other stuff going on that you have to do that is not making your own math problems. And so as a student, what I would do is when exams would come around or tests where I didn't necessarily have homework, this is the method I used to study. If I wasn't able to just straight up answer the problem or give the definition or produce the proof, usually examples that I had made surrounding these topics would come to my brain more quickly. And so using those examples, I would be able to kind of blueprint out what I needed to do and what I needed to apply to the problem. Now, this doesn't work 100% of the time, but the other thing that is helpful about making your own examples is that it allows you the opportunity to be mathematically creative. Now, when we think about creativity, or at least when I think about creativity, I usually think about doing something new or out of the box that I haven't really thought of before. But when problems are prescribed, mathematics education tends to dwarf creativity in its students. And this is highly contrasted by all of the other STEM fields. At certain points in science education, in really any field, and in statistics too, tends to move away from prescribed experiments to experiments that you develop yourself. And it starts to get you thinking creatively about what you're doing, why you're doing it, and how doing something a certain way will get at the concept at hand. For that reason, making your own examples is one of the smaller ways, but immensely helpful ways that you can develop your mathematical maturity. And it's super helpful when working on research questions where the concept or the phenomena you're studying in math hasn't really come up anywhere else or you're stumbling upon something that's not really well documented. By making these examples, you get a glimpse at what you're trying to study and from there you can build your understanding of what you're learning. So yes, 100% would recommend this one. Three, coding. Thinking mathematically and thinking programmatically can be very different processes. 
as one is more abstract and the other is in the moment. But they both at their core have logical consistency at play. Taking the time to learn how to read and parse code can help you better organize logical structures and communicate what you're doing, which is very helpful for proof-based mathematics and for some more higher level computations like those in calculus. One of the most common things in programming that illustrates its huge amount of usefulness to being a better math student is the process of trying to fix bugs. The reason for this is that when you go and decide to run a program, it's like a declaration that you think the logical structure of the program is correct and will do what you want it to do. And the bug arising is like the program telling you, no, you're wrong, and you need to go back to the drawing board and figure out what is wrong with your logical structure. The more you do it, the better you will be at critiquing your own work. And two, recognizing that you may be wrong about something gives you the ability to abandon misconceptions that you may have about certain mathematical topics as you begin to learn more about them. Those two skills are really important for those that are self-studying math or researching math because in many scenarios in those two situations, you'll have to rely on your own ideas and your own understanding of the material in order to continue moving forward with your mathematical pursuit. Four, learn another language. This one is a little bit out of left field, but it's the one I have the most experience with. Depending on your mindset, studying a foreign language and getting familiar with the grammar and the words of that language can be very helpful in your ability to manage mathematical information as it comes at you, whether that be while problem solving on a test or when you are reviewing information and doing research. When you avoid rote memorization in the language learning process and focus on word definitions and usage and sentence structure, you get to this point where processing this chunk of complex information is more important than just being able to roughly translate each word. And that is where it directly translates to math. Often before I started to get myself to study Greek and Mandarin and Hungarian, I always found it really difficult to read math or it would take me a really long time to parse out what was going on in a mathematical statement. And that's because a lot of the mathematical vocabulary that is used is used in a way that we don't really think about it in standard English. So for example, if you were reading a math text and you arrived at this sentence, the space's entropy is a limiting value derived from comparing the number of words of a given length in the underlying language to the given length of those words. One, that is super, super wordy. And two, like five of those words don't mean what they would mean in English here. In that sense, spending time with another language's vocabulary and its syntax and structure can help you go about parsing out mathematical information. Not that you should treat math as a foreign language, but sometimes it can feel that way. And in that sense, the more efficient you are with translation skills, the more efficient you would be at reading math. But anyhow, those were my four things. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you, if you did, if you enjoyed seeing my face, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you wanna see more of my mathematical content, you can find it over here except for my face won't be in that video. And if you want to subscribe to this channel, you can do so by clicking over here. Anyhow, that is all I've got. I am Nathan, this is Chalk, and I will see you next time.